so to begin with, I would like to thank all of you, the audience, the viewers, the listeners, you name it, for two things. First off, clarifying to me what the uh, stoned ape theory is, which I would like to thank all of you for uh, clarifying that in the YouTube comments. But in addition to that, I would really like to thank every single one of you for the incredible response and feedback that we have uh, received with regards to this segment. We thought we would just put it out and see what would uh, what would work and what would happen. And it turns out that a lot of you would like to hear more of an opinion-based uh, analysis from this segment in general. So, of course, Unleashing the Kraken, we try to stay unbiased. Of course, I give my opinion. But here, uh, this time around in uh, the Let's Get Banned segments, as I mentioned in the first episode, you will see truthfully um, that I really don't uh, pull any punches, so to speak. So let's jump into it. So we're going to cover two or three different stories loosely, uh, generally speaking. Now, I watched Dr. Stephen Greer's Cosmic Hoax, uh, and then I watched it one more time just to reaffirm my conclusions about the film. Now, as most of you know, I normally don't do this, but right after I watched the film the first time, I I felt as though I had to uh, make some notes simply because I probably would have forgotten it by then. So let's jump into it. And please keep in mind, I wrote this down. Uh, with Stephen Greer's cosmic hoax film, I fundamentally agree in principle. But when he says and categorizes the situation as a sort of black and white scenario, I don't fully or fundamentally agree. And OK, I'm going to put my notes down for a second because I know where I'm going with this. He said in the documentary, he said, he goes, you're going to hear, you know, the sh there's new podcasts and shows out there of them saying, yeah, of people saying that the nicer extraterrestrials tend to look like us, like humans, because people who are abducted allegedly by the Nordics or the ones that are from, you know, uh, Agartha or certain elements or aspects of Agartha or Eastern Europe, they tend to look more human and people ex uh, describe and explain having a much more pleasant experience during an abduction, whereas when they get abducted by greys or what have you, they're dissected, they're in some cases, honestly, uh, probed, in some cases, even, you know, anally, and, and things like this, and people come back with the marks to prove it, right? So the question becomes, okay, what is really going on here? Now, Mr. Greer claims that, again, we covered this literally like a month, month and a half ago with Project Mannequin, and we jumped into it much more on, on Patreon about how the NSA obtained a consciousness element of energy, whether they reverse engineered it or whether they were given it by a certain extraterrestrial species to control their own synthetically grown greys underground, amongst other things. And it's been presumed that the shadow government or the, you know, the MJ-12, the rogue uh, group, if you will, is in fact disseminating and bring, sending all of these greys out to abduct certain people who get too close to the truth in order to deceive them to make them think the greys are bad. This is what Mr. Greer is saying. Now, he does doesn't say it directly in the sense of, you know, oh, all of them are good, but that is certainly the vibe that he gives. Now, yes, he does, you know, uh, part of my English, he shits on Lou Elizondo and a handful of other guys. I'll get to that in a minute. But when you take a look at the fact that Mr. Greer is saying, you know, okay, this is all just a psyop by the human government, our leaders, to make us think the great aliens are bad. So when they do reveal aliens to us, it'll be like, okay, the human looking ones that look like us are good. And the, the, all the other ones are bad. Again, you can argue that's racist or speciesist. But here's the thing. I don't fundamentally agree with Mr. Greer in that particular area. Why? Because I feel like, and again, he has more experience than I do, but I feel like he is making it far too black and white in the sense of, no, this is the right answer or this is the wrong answer. Who is to say that there aren't different uh, factions or elements or uh, you know species or subspecies of gray aliens or hybrid gray aliens that are good? that some of them that have no interest in Earth or people on Earth, and some of them that are negatively intentioned. Again, it is also how we perceive it. Now, with that being said, too, I also want to mention Mr. Greer, as I would imagine many of you are uh, wanting to hear this part, uh, basically took a, a big shit on Lou Elizondo and his whole sort of crew, if you will. Now, let me just say something right off the bat here. <sighs> I think that Mr. Greer has an ego, whether he realizes it or not, a God complex, if you will. Now, that doesn't mean that he's wrong about things, okay? I'm telling you folks my opinion. This is just my opinion. I have no evidence of this, okay? I could be very wrong, and that's the whole point of this community. That's the beautiful thing about it. However, Mr. Greer in general, in my humble opinion is not really happy right now that other figures are taking prominence in the limelight of the UF within the UFO community, particularly with what's going on now with, I guess, with some type of disclosure. I really feel Mr. Greer would not be as uptight, if you will, about these individuals and figures if it wasn't such a prominent time where the government was releasing uh, data, documents, and information pertaining to extraterrestrials. Now, with all of that being said, the other thing I wanted to mention too here is that 
I do believe Mr. Greer, to a certain extent, is correct with regards to Mr. Elizondo and his whole team sort of being intelligence operatives, you know, being former counterintelligence agents. Uh, Lou Elizondo has a very, uh, I guess you could say, secretive past, if you will. Many people in the intelligence community never heard of him. Some will argue that's, be that's the whole point of being in the super secret part of the intelligence apparatus. But here's the thing, folks, and I have nothing to back this up. I'm just giving you folks my opinion. I watched this over twice, uh, the Cosmic Hoax, and... I've, of course, kept up with everything Mr. Elizondo's been saying online and uh, elsewhere. This is what I believe. I believe Mr. Elizondo is, in fact, a controlled agent by, I guess you could say, the intelligence community, the shadow group, you name it. I'm not sure. However, I get the sense, and this is purely my gut, my intuition, when I watch Mr. Elizondo speak, the more I watch him speak, the more I get the feeling, guys, that he wants to say much more than what he's saying, but he knows there are far too many strings being pulled behind him and that he doesn't want to die he doesn't want his family to die he doesn't want to be the one that disrupts the apple cart now look i'll be fine with that if the overall justification for disclosure is not to militarize and defend ourselves against different species now you might be saying okay dave how could you say that when you just said that you think some of the species are bad well i think that we should take a generally peaceful approach in terms of a mass consciousness level to these extraterrestrials because I believe that if the bad ones wanted to harm us, they would have done it by now or there are other elements or factions or other species in the way preventing the really bad things from happening or these bad things could be happening at an energetic level at such a higher level within our dimension we don't even realize it but again that's more for just you know extrapolating and, and, and things like this so with that being said folks I'll be honest with you I do think Mr. Greer painted way too much of a black and white picture um, at the same time though I do fundamentally agree with Mr. Greer when he said going back to World War II that the West and Europe uh, certain European countries the Allies you name it won the battle of World War II but they did not win the ideology because the concept is that and I do fundamentally agree here, and I'll be honest with you folks, I don't mean to boast, but we've covered a lot, like I think most of what Mr. Greer covers in this documentary in chronological order in the last three to five months. But anyways, it's very interesting to see that the ideology of the industrial, I guess you could say, era of Germany, pre-World War II uh, and, and all of that, right when they were ramping up again, seemed to have been pushed and disseminated into the United States. Of course, Operation Paperclip, right? That's not a conspiracy by any metric. Everybody knows that. So again, Gre Mr. Greer does make a point here. Again, just because I think he has a God complex doesn't mean that he has to be wrong about everything, right? So here's the thing. When Mr. Greer said that, again, the ideology was brought into the U.S., I believe it because take a look at Operation Paperclip. Nazis or former Nazis records were scrubbed and they were put into prominent positions of finance, economics, space travel, I mean, business, you name it. Right. And so ultimately, what we're again, Herman Oberth, Warner von Braun, we can just go on and on and on. So, again, I do actually fundamentally agree with Mr. Greer in that case. The other thing is this. I really do believe, guys, that within the UFO community, for those that follow it closely, you're, you're going to see there's two different factions. It's sort of like the Lou Elizondo versus the Stephen Greer kind of faction. This is all nonsense. I'm not here to take sides. I'm just here to give you folks my true and honest opinion. And look, I like to sit back and I like to see the sort of bickering and back and forth, if you want to call it, right? With that being said, I do want to give one more example that Mr. Greer, uh, uh, regarding Mr. Greer saying, you know, these aliens are not bad whatsoever. Okay, so there was, uh, there were many scriptures that we've covered on the show, Scri ancient scriptures, v uh, drawings, you know, things like this, uh, writings mentioned of eight sky gods coming down many thousands of years ago and ruling over certain qu quadrants or certain areas of landmass, which I believe we now know to be Egypt. Now, please forgive me if I am not correct with my uh, geographic uh, description and location. However, again, this was many thousands of years ago. Let's assume that was the Anunnaki, the Archons, whatever you want to call it. So if these eight extraterrestrials came down, okay, because there have been many r writings and reports of different, these type of stories that, you know, gods from the sky come down and they rule over the different quadrants. Did they plan to rule over humans and use them as slaves, as some writings say, or did they come down and humans viewed them as gods? Right. And they just ended up worshiping these extraterrestrials because simply uh, based on uh, on the evolutionary scale from a mental perspective, we simply could not, you know, just grasp that concept that they were simply aliens and not gods. With that being said, though, if they did, in fact, come down and rule over with, I guess you could say, violence or physical dominance, that's not a good alien. Now, again, 
the only rebuttal I could see by playing devil's advocate with myself over here is that, again, this was many thousands of years ago, but this, again, goes against what Mr. Greer is saying. All these extraterrestrials are good. If they are, then how come a bunch of sky gods came down and dominated certain massive, you know, areas of land, right? However, with that being said, too, like I just said, uh, it was a long, long time ago, so maybe things have changed and, and you name it, right? So, again... We see all that. Uh, there was also a very interesting part of the uh, show, too, um, or the documentary where Ben Rich, who was the former uh, CEO of Lockheed Martin Skunk Work Division, who, again, we've mentioned on the show quite often, said to his friend with about two to three weeks left to live verbally and also confirmed some of it via a handwritten note, which a lot of you who are Patreon members will see coming out in the next roughly 24 to 30 hours, the next member's episode. Uh, you folks will see that uh, Ben Rich said... We have things in the desert that are 50 to 100 years ahead of what you cannot imagine. Not 50 to 100 years ahead of what you can imagine, but of what you cannot imagine. He said, he goes, the things we have there in those underground bases put Star Wars and Star Trek to shame. Verbatim, word for word, he said that. But then he said to his friend, the ones that know about this, the elites, if you will, have chosen to not pursue interstellar space travel because they felt it was too much of a hassle and it wasn't worth it. So... This is my perspective on that. Do I think Ben Rich knew about the secret space program, but he didn't, he didn't tell his friend? Absolutely. Uh, with that being said, too, I also kind of believe him in the sense that I think there are certain elites that really wanted to just rule over Earth and still want to rule over Earth and could care less about anti-gravity, um, I guess zero-point energy technology, interstellar travel, uh, peace, communication, uh, ex exploration with other alien species, you name it, right? So again, Mr. Greer's documentary allegedly, as we can see right over here on the screen, is uh, being shadow banned, as he says here on Twitter. Um, however, again, I do respect the fact that he's put this out for free. He's been criticized in the last handful of years for, you know, charging... Um, arguably insurmountable fees, if you will. And again, no disrespect to Mr. Greer. I disagree with him on a lot of things, but I fundamentally agree with him on a lot of other things as well. So it's very hard to say, folks. It's very hard to say. Now, overall, I'll be honest with you. I didn't want to say this in the beginning because I didn't want to sound like a douchebag, sounding like we were bragging or whatever. But for those that have been following the show for, you know, at least two to three months now, if you sit down and you watch this documentary, you're going to say, holy crap, this has been covered on Generation Z literally almost in the exact same order. So again, um, maybe Mr. Greer has watched our show. I'm not saying that he copied stuff from the show. I'm saying that when he mentioned uh, in the documentary, he goes, there's these new people out there saying, oh, you know, the Nordic looking ones are, are the nicer ones and the greys are bad. Maybe uh, he's referring to what I've spoken about before. Again, we've covered all the angles here, right? So it's hard to say. The next thing I wanted to cover, hopefully I covered all the angles there, uh, was this right here pertaining to bots and John McAfee. And I know I've spoken about this before, but a lot of you wanted me to get into much more detail. So this was Janice McAfee, John McAfee's widow, so his wife, uh, tweeted this out yesterday from my understanding. I cannot begin to describe this pain I am feeling, that everyone who truly loved John is feeling. I have been struggling to write this tweet since the news of John's death. I still cannot believe he is really gone. I miss you and I will love you forever, John David. End quote. Now, this was the tweet that she captioned with the attachment of the image or the writing that uh, that she basically put as her official statement uh, in the solidification of uh, Mr. McAfee's passing. Now, I do want to make it very clear, however, that uh, Mr. McAfee, uh, and this is thanks to our friend, our good friend of the show, Camden, um, and partner, uh, he was not a saint. He, he really wasn't. He screwed people and what have you. All right. So let me just put that right out there right now. OK, he knew what he was. He signed up for. He did a lot of things. And again, we cover a lot more in the members episodes because I can only say so much here on YouTube. Right. So with that being said, though, again, he, he chose um, you could not have been more honest. I mean, uh, or more deliberately honest and transparent in the months leading up to his alleged suicide. As Mr. Eric Weinstein has said, uh, who's gaining prominence, not just in the UFO community, but within the conspiracy realm, if you will, saying that he could not been have more uh, could not have been more clear with the tattoo that he got on his arm shortly after Epstein committed suicide saying you know if I uh, if I end up dead then um if I end up dead and they say I committed suicide, know that they, they Epstein'd me or suicided me, whatever. But anyways, let's read the official statement that his uh, widow has written and released. I have been trying to find the words to adequately express my thoughts. I am still in shock, in disbelief, really. John should never have spent a day in prison, let alone nearly nine months. I spoke with him twice the morning of the 23rd, and in our last conversations, we spoke about the court's deci decision excuse me, to extradite him in the U.S. The, the, the decision did not come as a surprise to John myself or his lawyers 
We were prepared for the Spanish courts to grant the request for the extradition. We had a plan of action in place to begin the appeal process, and we discussed plans for the next stage of his legal fight. The extradition would not have happened immediately. It would, would have taken many months at the least. Besides that, John had already won a victory before the hearing in that seven of the ten charges in the case were dropped in the days leading up to his hearing. John was a fighter, and he had so much more fight left in him. He told me to be strong and not to worry. We would continue to fight all the necessary appeals. His last words to me were, I love you. I will call you in the evening, but sadly that call never happened. The story of John's, in quotes, she put, suicide, was already prepared and presented to the pub public before I or his attorneys were even notified of his death. And before I go on, again, folks, you see the same reoccurrence here. But here's the thing. The question becomes this. It's not that the, it, it, it's, it doesn't. I feel like it's not about if the public can pick up on the connections, if you will, of these alleged suicides, but good luck proving it. Good luck putting those who, who truly orchestrated this and these type of things away, like put it away in jail. Good luck. Right. And it's unfortunate, but it's true. I feel like we're getting to the point now where uh, some of these elites, not all, not all of them, but some of them are literally saying, pardon my English here, folks, fuck it. Like if, if as long as it doesn't trace back to us, people could speculate all they want. But again, doesn't mean shit which some of them are that sociopathic and narcissistic, right? Some of them are a little more careful in covering their tracks, and some of them have eh, a smidge of morals, but that's not saying much anyway, so let's carry on. Words cannot describe how enraged I am at the fact that uh, I had to hear the news of John's death via a direct message on Twitter. Holy shit, that's, um, te that's terrible. And now it's being conveniently reported that there was a suicide note found in his pocket, something that was not mentioned when I collected John's belonging from the prison and another piece of information the media somehow got a hold of b before myself and John's attorneys. Okay, before I go on again, sounds like a perfectly um, placed insertion of an intelligence asset and operation right here. I appreciate everyone's condolences and the love you have shown for John. Your love and support mean more than than you know. I have received countless messages, so please forgive me if I do not respond, but as I, as I am sure you can all understand, social media is the last thing on my mind right now. I need answers, and that will take time. The investigation into John's de death is still ongoing, but I will share what information I can when I can. Until then, I do not accept the suicide story that has been spread by the malignant cancer that is the mainstream media. They and their unnamed sources are not to be trusted. End quote. Okay. I do believe that she knows things that, uh, Mr. that her husband had told her that he didn't even go public with. Now, you might, we're looking at a screen now of Reddit. Uh, this is posted by you slash snoo books 5387, uh, give or take uh, eight hours ago. Bots busted shilling hard for the so-called Delta variant this morning. Why is this brought up? Why are we talking about COVID when we're just still discussing uh, John McAfee? Well, he described many years ago in a Reddit Ask Me Anything or an AMA, if you will, and in other statements and tweets as well, too, digitally that he's made since 2012, 2013, up until his alleged, quote, suicide. He has said this is exactly how it's done. And it's very interesting to see the conflation between the way in which he described the apparatuses of the way the intelligence communities harness the digital realm. As, in a, as we can see here, he described very similar things. Look, look at how many, quote unquote, brothers have just tested positive for COVID. Now, that's no disrespect to those who I may have who may have actually caught this or whose family family members have passed i have to say this you know for respect and on top of that i have to be careful because it's youtube but ultimately it, it's more about proving a point and a concept that mr mcafee was trying to get at here now allegedly he might still be alive allegedly you know he has a fail safe in place there was a website that shut down uh, that went up 20 uh, short many hours after his death that said they were going to release all of these intelligence secrets and information the sh the sites uh, quietly went down after that there's been some speculation about ethereum Bitcoin, certain cryptos he had, and things like that. I don't want to comment on right now because it's kind of all over the place. With that being said, folks, I would like to thank all of you so, so very much for listening, hearing my opinion out, and things like this. And I would love for all of you to give me your thoughts, honestly, whether it's about uh, the Mr. Greer's uh, Cosmic Hoax documentary, whether it's about John McAfee, or whether it's about this whole concept of bots and how this seems to be, you know, pushing the COVID agenda further that Mr. McAfee only seemed to, um, I guess you could say, ascertain the veracity of and validate even more so with that being said folks thank you so so much and we'll catch all of you very soon cheers